Welcome back to Current Calamities, where I take a break from the past to look forward to the future with the games of the present. Like the change in scenery, it's more appropriate than you think, as I figured I should give you the full experience on top of the simulation we're looking at tonight. Arcade Paradise, the perfect representation and exaggeration on how to get rich when the arcade industry was at its peak. I'm sure that was every kid's dream at one point to own their own Chuck E. Cheese or local entertainment joint, so now I can fulfill a dream of my own. What? What is laundry? Depending on how long you've been on the channel or have looked at the others I'm involved with, then you'll know that I've worked at my local retro arcade, Starfighters Arcade, for the better part of a decade. So if anyone was more qualified to talk about this game, I couldn't fit the criteria more. I know a good amount to how a business like this runs and how it was like back in its glory days. So why waste any more time and let's get to paradise on earth. <laughs> While logos and fancy graphics go by, I am already a little bit confused. From what I understand, the game set in the 1990s, though the use of these kinds of colors you see here, I and I'm sure plenty of others would associate with the 80s. I mean, some things linger on from one decade to the next, at least that's the excuse I use when saying I'm a 90s kid, and this game loads like the 90s, so we're off and running. I haven't seen much of this game apart from one trailer years ago, but I guess I wasn't paying too much attention or got confused with another game as I didn't expect a first person third dimensional experience. Oh my god, a truck! Can we go to the street? Ah yes, the classic struggle. The arcades aren't out here anyway, they're inside our family laundromat. Today's our first day in a managerial position which was given to us by our egotistical father, and we use the first day as a tutorial to get us familiar with our day-to-day -day tasks that we'll be encountering, which includes putting customers' laundry in the washer and the dryer, plus while those are going on to make sure the establishment is clean of any junk. Which is very true to life. You have no idea how many water bottles I find around here. And on the odd occasion, unclog the toilet. Doing all these tasks sufficiently and timely will earn you a good payday for the business, not for yourself, because who cares about the labor force? But you might be asking yourself, where the hell do the arcades come into play? Well, it doesn't take long to find out. We just have to open the right door. Going into the storage area, we find a couple arcade machines just sitting around, turned on by the way. Can you imagine the electricity bill? I question my relative about it, who reminds me to check the... Hoppers. I don't know if that's slang or not, but I call them coin doors. If you've never seen the insides of one before, the coin travels in, adds a credit like this, then falls down into a container, where hopefully you made a killing. Well, I guess people didn't like Sinistar. But the games in this game had a nice chunk of change in them, and we get the idea to buy some more games to increase profit. Makes sense to me. So just before closing, you can gather up all the profits and put them in a nearby safe, then you can use the money to buy more arcade machines and maybe some other things that we'll get to later, and when you do make a purchase, you can add it to the storage room where you can mix and match as you see fit. And that's pretty much the basics. I mean, there's more to come, but it's not a fast process to make money. You actually have to work. Most of your time will consist on being timely with your regular routine of washing and drying plus all the upkeep. It will take its sweet time, but in this game, minutes are converted into seconds. The place opens in the morning and closes around 11, though you can stay as long as you like if you don't care about sleep, so that would give you about 20 minutes to spend on one day. That is, if you cared that much. 
I'm done with all the naked children. Thank God these customers don't walk around in their birthday suit, but they do leave a good number of pizza boxes everywhere and have an interesting disappearing act. They just distort as you get closer to them. I would definitely question what I ate today if I saw that happen. Hey brother, I didn't know you were here. How you doing? <laughs> You'll have a little downtime, so why not use it by playing the arcade games you got? Yes, you can actually play the arcade machines, fully functional and all original, to a point. Racer Chaser is like a mix of Grand Theft Auto and Pac-Man. We have our own digital crane game, but we're stacking boxes instead of getting prizes. And I'm not aware that a digital air hockey table was ever put into the arcade. But if there was, I want to know about it as it's pretty addictive. But it also made me worry that I got Joy-Con drift again as my paddle was bugging out at times. The other machines didn't give me that effect, so it must be something with this machine. Wonder what's wrong with it. Ah, oh god! Oh god! Oh! <sighs> that has never happened at this arcade. I unfortunately had rats call my Holoseum their home for a spell. You don't have to worry too much about forgetting your regular duties as your watch will tell you when the earliest machine has done its cycle so you can address it immediately or ASAP when you finish your game. Though it will affect your score. Brian, your brother got into a car wreck. I don't care, I'm playing Star Castle. I don't know about you, but after a couple hours of this game, I feel like I might be getting some PTSD or experiencing some flashbacks. I don't know why, but I got really tired and had a strange, funny feeling going after a while. I skipped ahead a little till something more eventful happened, and well, here it is, I've expanded the arcade. After a little while, you will be given the option to expand the arcade section, allowing you to purchase more games and hopefully make more profit, whether your dad likes it or not. He's one of those that think these games are nothing special. What a boomer. Also, we now have special tasks that we can do if we want to earn more money, only this time it's some good pound sterling. I didn't know we were of British descent, and if so, why couldn't this take place in the EU? They got an interesting gaming history themselves, especially in the computer realm. Hope to go to Nostalgia Nerds Barcadia or the Arcade Archive one day. My kind of places. As I said, these tasks are optional, but you can use them at their eBay clone, the Pound Bay, to get accessories that could help you make the game just a little bit easier. Good and all, but... I'm worried what would happen if I actually left at around 4 p.m. as that is one of the things you could do. Call me a bitch, but I like doing an honest job in my allotted time, and when I'm making bank, can you really blame me? I carried on doing my job, getting more arcade machines and getting more cash to spend on arcade machines. I'm just so efficient at this that I'm getting the dad to trust my instincts. I'm getting this down to a science, and it won't be long before I can expand my arcade even more. That's where I'm calling it for the moment. It's a lot of work with barely any breaks, so I'm going to take a vacation just to step away from it. But it was a good game to spend some time in, as crazy as that may sound, but simulators like this can make everyday life a little more fun. 
at least if you live remotely the same life as the game does, it's going to be interesting to dive even more into the little things like how to move popular games with least popular to maximize profit. Why don't we scooch these games aside and put that over here? Maybe that'll get it more play. Oh, who am I kidding? These games will all get played eventually. Whether people win is a completely different story. So with all that being said, what's my overall opinion? One of the best parts of my life has been working at my local retro arcade. I've learned a lot and consider it my home away from home. Wouldn't trade it for anything. Unless I could go back in time and open up my own arcade during the Golden Age, then I'd be in the money. Arcade Paradise at least made it look like so, and they weren't far off. Arcades were still popular even after the 83 crash, but half the time they were the side hustle for other small businesses, and even the side hustles had unwanted side hustles. You see kids, this is what happens when you do crack. Winners don't use drugs. All jokes aside, this game was alright, kept me on my toes, and is a decent way to spend some time learning how to effectively run two businesses at once, but not forgetting about the fun to be had with the arcade aspect. I think the only thing I would want is more time with the arcade games to try and get better at them. Cause I ain't no slacker, I'd rather do it after hours, but I also gotta get some sleep too. By the way, Mike and Steve, I actually bought the building, which means I own everything in it, and I changed the lock, so thanks for the business. I'm going to be rich. <laughs> So what do you think? Do you agree with me or have your own thoughts? Let me know by leaving a comment. If you like what you see, like the video with those thumbs up. If you think anyone else would like this vid, share it around. And if you want to see more of me, this show, and others, hit the subscribe button. I'm Brian the Blue. Thanks for watching. I'm going back to the past and until next time, I'll see you in the future.